really, I think what what is exciting about what we presented in Milan, there were 12 abstracts that were presented at the EADV meetings, the European Dermatology meetings. Seven of those 12 abstracts came from our trial. So I'd like to believe that we at Timber are really leading both the scientific research for TMB001, as well as frankly, leading the research for the entire field um, in these two particular forms of ichthyosis. Um, we presented and had published the basic primary data um, of, of these trials. Uh, just to briefly review, the trial that we presented on was called a control trial. It was a phase 2B trial with 34 subjects in it that studied in equivalent numbers uh, patients on low dose TMB001 of 0.05%, a higher dose of 0.1%, or a vehicle, um, which, and, and that's what also differentiates our topical isotretinoin from other isotretinoins, is our vehicle, which is formulated to predominantly maintain uh, the drug in the skin layers and not allow the majority of it or even a large proportion of it to enter into the bloodstream, which is, again, why a topical approach to this disease um, is a much better choice than an, a systemic uh, 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 approach to the disease, because systemic retinoids have a whole litany of uh, potential side effects, predominant of which are teratogenicity. They cause significant birth de defects in probably half of the children who were born to women who take systemic retinoids. Uh, it can cause problems with dryness of the mouth, of the skin. Uh, it can cause changes in the blood. So it can cause uh, mild liver damage. It can raise cholesterol levels, change blood counts, particularly platelets, which are responsible for blood clotting, normal blood clotting. It can reduce red blood cells, white blood cells, which are responsible for uh, affecting uh, infection. We're reducing infection, helping us to fight infection. And so what we found in this uh, phase 2B trial of the low dose, the high dose, and the vehicle is after 12 weeks, based on two standardized questionnaires or scales, that the 0.05% was clinically and statistically significantly more effective uh, in improving patients, causing them to go from moderate to severe disease, for example, to clear or almost clear uh, compared to vehicle alone. Uh, what we presented at this meeting is really twofold. We presented some data that are specific to the TMB001 uh, compound. And then we presented some data that are actually useful for the entire ichthyosis community of really anybody who wants to study um, topical uh, retinoids for treatment of ichthyosis. So for our trial, uh, what we presented uh, was um, we looked at what were the characteristics of patients who responded. And what we found was that really the things you would expect, weight, age, gender, uh, were not factors. So male patients, female patients, large patients, small patients um, really didn't, didn't affect your ability to respond or not respond to the drug. We saw that patients who responded tended to have a little bit less involvement of their body, 60 to 75 percent of their body was involved versus 75 to 80 percent for the people who didn't respond. But that's still a fairly large proportion of their body to have this disease on. But we also found that the people who responded were the ones who had the worst quality of life and the worst amount of itching. So, in fact, they're the ones, the patients who are, in essence, having this affect their life the most are the ones who benefit the most. Uh, what we found was, as is well known with topical retinoids, is that patients, at least in the first few weeks, uh, have problems tolerating them because they can cause stinging and burning. Uh, what we found, though, is that patients who had up to three interruptions of what are called drug holidays for a few days to even a week uh, could still respond 50 to 75% of the time. If a patient didn't need to have any interruptions to their treatment, 100% uh, of those patients responded. So we've also utilized those data uh, in our design of the phase three program in terms of instead of starting every patient on twice a day, which is how the drug has been tested in the two previous trials, 
we're starting all patients in the phase three in this trial on uh, once a day treatment for three weeks till they can show some tolerance to it. And then after that, we change them to nine weeks of twice a day and then in the phase three. And then what's unique that we will study that has not been studied before is can you take a patient who is responding to twice a day treatment and then switch them to once a day um, or keep them on twice a day? And is there any difference in terms of maintenance of effect for another 12 weeks? So we really are trying to hone in on, based on the data that we've just presented, how to best utilize this particular drug um, in the real world. Uh, what we also looked at were uh, skin reactions and the fact that the skin reactions that happened, as I just alluded uh, to in um, my previous comments, occur predominantly in the first two to four weeks of treatment. Uh, and then after that, the vast majority of them resolve, which, uh, as I just noted, allowed us to integrate that some of that into our phase three program. Uh, we show data on age and the fact that pediatric patients do as well on the drug as older patients do. Um, we looked at um, the fact that we were looking at two different genetic uh, uh, types of disease, X-linked and lamellar. And what we found was when you look at the Delta, the difference between drug response and placebo or vehicle in this case, the response rates or the deltas were identical um, for either the X-linked or lamellar forms, regardless of which a testing method you use, whether it was the VIS-50, the visual index of uh, ichthyosis severity, or the IGA, the Investigator Global Assessment. What we um, presented at this meeting that we hadn't presented before uh, are the lab findings, which I alluded to earlier, in which one can argue or propose uh, are harbingers of how much of the drug is absorbed. Because as I said, with the oral retinoids, um, those patients are at a higher risk of having abnormalities caused um, based on blood counts and such. Well, we found that with, in the 0.05% group, none of the patients who got treated with 0.05% had any abnormalities of blood counts, platelets, they had no evidence really of significant uh, liver damage. They had no changes in their cholesterol levels. So that gives us good hope and evidence, number one, that we're not going to cause lab changes. And number two, that the vast majority of the drug is staying where we want it to stay, which is in the dermis and the epidermis, or predominantly the epidermis. And the other thing we found was, which is probably pertinent, which is pertinent to us, but probably pertinent to the rest of the investigative community is the fact that a very standard questionnaire that's used in a lot of dermatology trials called the Dermatology Life Quality Index um, <clears throat> was really not the best questionnaire to use for this population is that even though patients, as I've described with ichthyosis, do have clear um, quality of life issues because of their skin disease, when you measure them on this particular questionnaire, a large proportion of them on this questionnaire say they don't have any issues with quality of life. So it, it is much less likely that these patients don't have quality of life issues than it is that the questionnaire is not asking the right questions. What we found was, was the patients who truly had uh, abnormalities in their quality of life based on this scale had remarkable improvements, 75 or 80% improvements in their measured quality of life. But that's also told us that we should use a different questionnaire for the phase three program. And so we're using a questionnaire that comes from France called the Ichthyosis Quality of Life 32, which is an ichthyosis specific quality of life questionnaire as opposed to the DLQI, which is more of a generic dermatological questionnaire. 